So I'm here at the Film Fest Hamburg and with me is Catherine Gunn. Um, in 2003, you've been working as a Mandarin translator for the UK's government communications headquarters. And at some point you realize that the arguments for the war against Iraq were not really valid. Um, so you decided to become a whistleblower to stop that war. And now your story has been transformed into a movie called Official Secrets. Uh, what, do you th what were your thoughts when you first heard about the films being made? Well, this film has actually um, been in the process of being made for 10 years coming um, it's had various uh, iterations, it's you know, come and gone over the years with different people involved. And so for a long time, um, myself and Martin Bright, the journalist, we've been, um, you know, a little bit skeptical about whether it would really happen or not. Um, and three years ago when this particular package, this production company and the director came to us and said we really want to you know make this film we were again a little bit skeptical but they won us over because um, they showed us they proved to us that they genuinely wanted to tell the story as truthfully as possible and in particular the director he sat down with us and you know gave us a lot of time to tell the story ourselves so yeah, I'm happy that it's, um, it's happened because for me the story is important not because of what I did but because of the specific issues and I hope, you know, when the viewers see the film it will open up a lot of discussions about the issues that the film addresses. Mm -hmm. So how much have you been involved in the making of the film? You mentioned that earlier. Um, did uh, director Gavin Hood ask for your, for your advice? Well, he asked for all the main characters to give their account of the events. So, you know, I sat, I sat down with him for five days, um, basically giving him my version of events. Martin Bright did the same, Ben Emerson, the lawyer, did the same. Um, various other people did as well. And, you know, he sort of he worked with the script, the original script that he took on board. He worked with it and uh, rewrote it several times and always came back to us with the script. So, you know, we were very much um, collaborating on it. Yeah. And um, what do you think of the final film? Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm happy with it, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's tense. I think, um, probably more tense than I actually felt at the time, um, but it's difficult to portray a whole year in under two hours, and I think, you know, Gavin's done a, a great job, and the actor, actors and actresses have done a superb job. You've been played by Kira Knightley, mm -hmm. wonderful Kira Knightley. Mm -hmm. um, did you meet her beforehand, and did you help her develop the character, and how well did she perform? In your opinion? Well, I met her before they started filming, um, and I was very nervous about meeting her. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you sit down with somebody and talk to them, you realise they're just the same as you, really. And um, we talked about, you know, motherhood, because we both have daughters. And, um, and then we talked about the issues, we talked about the time period in 2003. Um, and I was impressed with how much she'd already researched and how, much, how good her questions were, specific. Um, and then I did go and visit the set for one day with my family. So I, I can't imagine how she felt while she was sitting there, you know, acting, knowing that I was watching in, in the director's chair, sort of watching the shooting going on. But it was a really good experience for us. Yeah. We must have felt very awkward to see that your film is, you're watching yourself right now being portrayed. portrayed. Yeah, it's not so bad because, you know, she, Kira Knightley doesn't look like me and, um, you know, the settings are slightly different for the film, you know, they're not identical copies of 
the real places and so on. So for me, it's sort of like seeing somebody else's story, which is very similar to my story. And there are times when I, you know, it gets very close to the bone and I go, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned that Gavin Hood tried, tried to uh, make it as truthfully as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as a scriptwriter or a director, you always have to stretch or condense the truth a little bit to make mm -hmm. it more exciting, mm -hmm. to make it more suspenseful. Mm -hmm. That's, I think it's okay up to a certain level. But uh, what's your opinion about how truthful a film is in the end? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, can't, I have no complaints because really there was no stretching um, that much of the truth, really. I mean, those events did happen. And in fact, there were some instances where uh, the extent to which something happened was condensed. So, for example, my, my husband was, um, you know, taken away. And in the film, it, it's 24 hours. But in reality, it was 72 hours. It was three days before he was back home with me. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. When you look back at all, all you did, would you do it all over again? Yes. You know, I've said that in every interview I've had. But I would do it again because you do what you can with the knowledge that you have. And... If the circumstances were all the same, you know, I would still take the same action. That's very good to hear. Um, but even though you took an immense risk, um, you obviously weren't able to prevent the war, mm. which is sad. Mm. But in the end, it was proven that you were absolutely right. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it now? Well, there's no, there's no joy in knowing that I was right. In fact, it's, you know, it's, it's painful to know that I was right and that many others were right also because the decision to go to war has been such a catastrophe for not only Iraq, but principally they bear the heaviest burden, but uh, you know, in um, military families across the US and the UK. It's an awful legacy. It's only been 16 years since you were back. Do you think the times have changed for whistleblowers now, for better or for worse? I think the times have changed and they are getting worse because not only are whistleblowers now under attack, but journalists are also under attack. And if, um, you know, if journalists are put in a position where they are fearful of publishing information, then we're in a very, very dangerous situation. Yeah. Do you have any idea what we all can do to, let's say, in 10 years still have investigative, investigative journalism? That is a good question, and I think it's one that we're exploring. In particular, Martin Bright is also mm -hmm. very keen on exploring this issue. And also the issue of protecting whistleblowers to the extent that it's no longer exceptional to blow the whistle. And I think that's a, a concept that we need to um, spread, really. Absolutely. Um, when you finally won the court, um, how did your life change after that? The first two years were very difficult. Um, I just really wanted to get back to normality, uh, anonymity, and um, and it was stressful to revisit the whole experience. So for two to four, five years even, I was really reluctant to talk about it openly. Um, subsequently, I became a mother, and so you know I was focused on raising a child. And I think now it's a good time for me to um, to discuss these issues and to come forward, and uh, because you know there there is that perspective and that distance. Martin just told me that you have, you have built up a network for whistleblowers. Can you, can you tell me about it? Well, I think I, I personally haven't really done anything but whistleblowers um, and their advocates in the US have done a lot to raise the profile of um, whistleblowers. 
Um, and so, yes, there is sort of a, a loose network of people involved in, um, in these issues. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing today? Besides oh, promoting, besides the promoting film. this wonderful film. <laughs> um, well, I, I live in Turkey with my husband and my daughter, and um, you know, my main focus is trying to be a good mother and a good example to my daughter. But also, I'm you know um, looking at ways that I can become more involved. Okay, let's hope this happens. Let's hope that people never forget how important the role of the press is in our society. Mm -hmm. And good luck with the film, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Mine too. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.